Hello everyone, welcome back to the Brothers Grim Dark. Today we've got another hobby tutorial for you today. Today, 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 today. It's always today, today. Uh, so today we're going to be showing you how we look at our one of our new armies that's come in this season. It's the Astra Militarum. And again, it's going to be a custom kind of army scheme. We're not following one of the existing regiments. We're coming up with something for ourselves. Uh, this is going to be Dean's kind of project as he goes through our new crusade series this year. So follow that if you're not already. Um, and yeah, again, we kind of wanted to come up with another scheme that was going to look really striking on the table, quite different than some of the armies we'd already looked at, um, and, you know, really go more for that sort of futuristic, but also kind of retro World War II-ish style that the Astro Militar Armour are really great at. Uh, so yeah, we think we've come up with something quite good for that. Um, it has a couple of really nice simple techniques in it. It's the first, closest we've kind of come so far to more of a sort of slap chop style um, with our armies. Uh, we think it works really well, we think it's going to be a nice quick scheme we can paint. Um, but it's a little bit more complex than maybe something like we did with the Necrons earlier. So there's a few more colours involved, a few more different techniques. So we're really excited about it, we're really excited to get this kind of army built up and going. Um, is again, follow along with uh, Dean's crusade journey to see how this army goes over time. But today we're going to be showing you how to paint one of those models. Um, so yeah, we're going to head over to the painting tutorial desk, it's over there somewhere. And uh, yeah, get on with it. So follow along, let us know what you think. All right, so the model we're going to be painting today is this really cool guy. It's the uh, Castellan from the new Astro Militarum range. Uh, as soon as I saw this model, I was like, that's one I, I kind of want to play around with, even though this is going to be Dean's army. Um, so I'm, I'm super happy I get to paint this guy, and hopefully it'll be a, a good little example of what we're kind of doing with our paint scheme overall. As you can see straight from the bat, we're going with a kind of um, slap choppy kind of style here. So first off, we gave him a spray of Chaos Black. And then just from the top down on top of the model, uh, we went with Gracier. So that already gives us um, a very bright top of the model, uh, nice smooth, really good, works well with the contrast paint. Then from underneath, you can see it's still almost black down there. So we've already got um, some of those shadows and highlights already built in for us. It's just kind of in grayscale right now. So what we're really going to be doing to start with is just sort of filling in the blanks, putting the colors in um, on top of those using contrast paints. So if you've seen any sort of slap chop style before, it's, it's very much in that sort of vein. So it's kind of like filling the blanks right now. So we're gonna, we've got a whole bunch of different colors and we're gonna go, okay, the coat's gonna be this color, we fill all that in. Um, the main thing to kind of keep in mind with this technique is because the paints are quite translucent, you want to try and be fairly tidy with where you're painting them, make sure they don't spill over into other places because then you sort of get transparent paints on top of transparent paints that sort of look quite muddy. So just be quite tidy if you can um, as you're kind of going through this, but otherwise, um, yeah, we'll just get cracking on. So the first color, with the most dominant one, um, is going to be the green. So that's going to be on his coat, on his sleeves, um, most of the, the kind of on his trousers. So you can't really see those underneath his coat. Um, but yeah, most of the kind of dominant cloth colors. So the green is one of the, the primary colors for the scheme. Uh, so we're using the Creed Camo uh, contrast paint. We want to get a good coat. Um, but this color in particular, I think, needs two, two kind of coats of this. So just make sure with this first one, you're not going too heavy um, because we're going to give it a second one anyway. So try to avoid it pooling up too badly in, in different spots. Um, so just keep the paint moving, keep it going all these different areas, sort of encourage it into the, the recesses a little bit. Um, but otherwise, just get this all over. And I am using a decent brush for this. This is my, my favorite brush, sort of size three, because I do want to have a decent point so I can make sure it's going, you know, when I'm working in these areas. It's going where I've, exactly where I want it to, so it's not spilling over um, kind of into different areas. As I said, we want to be fairly tidy with this, um, but also have an, a decent sized brush so we can get that paint on as efficiently as possible. Like here, you can see he's got this strap for his shoulder pads. I'm just going to try and avoid that as much as possible because I'm going to fill that in with a different color shortly. And you can see how different the green goes on on these darker areas compared to the parts that have put the light a bit more. So really getting a lot of the work done for us already with those shadows. So the next thing we're going to do is the blue armor plates. And for that we're going to use Leviathan Blue. Um, it's a nice rich blue color, um, quite deep. But again, I find it sometimes it can be a little patchy um, with just one coat. So we're going, to go, we're going to do two of this as well. But we'll get the first coat on now. We'll go through everything and then we'll go back and do the ones which have need two coats because by that time everything will dry. So for his armor plates, we're looking at this chest piece here, his shoulder pads mostly. 
And I think I'm going to do the fist and his, uh, the armor plates on his, his arm this color as well. Yeah, I'm kind of pulling the paint on these areas from the top downwards because the top will be the, the brightest kind of area. I'm just building off those shadows that we've already got from the spray. We are going for efficiency with this paint scheme, but as I said, it does pay off to be as neat as you can with this kind of, this, uh, when we're doing these coats. I am not the neatest of painters, I have to admit, so this is good practice for me as well. That's all of the armor plated areas. Am I missing anything? I think I'll do this bit as well. Okay, that's the blue. Next up is the sort of leather area. So I'm thinking here for like the straps that hold his armor in place, also his boots, um, probably the pouch for his pistol, things like that. Uh, so this one we're gonna use Saigor Brown. Really quite like this color for leather. I think it's got a really nice rich tone to it. Um, and you can pair it with quite a few different highlight colors depending on what kind of look you wanna do. Um, and sometimes you don't even need to highlight at all if you're just kind of getting things on quickly. So it's a really nice base coat I find for, for you know, that sort of dark leather materials. So we're gonna go through this. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna focus on boots, the gun holster here, uh, his belt, these straps, the straps, that sort of thing. And one thing I haven't actually decided yet is what color his hat's gonna be. I think I'm actually gonna do that in green as well, but give it a black bill and red when we get to that. But we we'll, might we'll come back and do that with that second coat of green. So what's fun about painting a new model, I have to figure out where all these colors go now. You can see this is one of the much more saturated contrast paints. So it really does go on very nicely. But this one I find you really just need one layer of, won't be doubling this one up. Good tough leather boots. leather scabbard scabbard yeah for his sword next is doing the gray um, and don't use this for too much too many parts of the model it's kind of like the underclothing so things like some of them have uh, collars underneath their armor gloves things like that um, so it's just gonna be a few little patches I, I pick out with this and I'm using basilicanum gray it's my kind of go-to gray wash I'll also be using this later on the armor and again, it's another contrast paint I quite like because you can kind of choose which direction to take it based on what you highlight it with later, if you choose to highlight it at all. I said for some models, I actually give it more of a brown highlight rather than a gray highlight. Um, and that really completely changes the, the tone of, of the color. Um, whereas you can just give it a standard gray highlight, like all through in or Dawnstone or something like that, and then it just looks like a nice gray. So you, it's a good, Good base coat that you can you can go in a couple of different directions from. I think I might just do a couple of these cords in this grey as well because I don't really want to draw too much attention to them. 
Next up is black, and I'm going to use this for both the areas which are actually going to be black, but also the areas we've left, which will be for metallics, um, silver. I quite like just doing black first um, as the base coat, and then we're going to fill that in with lead belcher later on. Uh, but this just means you've got a kind of solid undercoat for the lead belcher. And black legion is just a terrific black. Covers, covers really nicely. It's quite a matte finish, um, but it just works straight out of the pot. I use it as my default black for everything these days. Just work my way around. Okay, so again, this will probably be silver, but the black's a nice, nice base coat to work from afterwards. He's got a lot of Aquila-y things on him, doesn't he? Let's whip you this. Officer. Another one on this shoulder. It's actually not too fuzzy a model, really. I think they did a really good job with the range. And just enough decoration on them. slightly smaller brush um, and then do the these little details in the fist he's got his little pistony things in here so I'd like to just get those based in black as well without going too much over the the blue we did earlier and the last color doesn't actually come up on every model um, in this in our Astro Militarum uh, but it's the flesh terrors red so I'm going to be using this um, on things like the officers uh, to kind of give them a little bit special. So his what? Oh, what? what are they called? The shoulder bits? Um, his sleeve, uh, kind of the, the rim that goes around his hat, the, the band there. Um, but we'll also use it occasionally for things like power weapons or uh, eye lenses, goggles, that sort of thing. But fairly sparingly. It's mostly just a little spot to kind of draw attention and it'll make the character stand out a little bit more because it'll have just a little bit more of it. Yeah, on most models I would leave the these uh, cuffs the same colour as the rest of his coat, but just to mark this guy out as someone extra special in case the hat wasn't a giveaway. I'll give him some nice shiny red cuffs as well. And same thing for his sashes. And then I'm going to do the power cable back here as well, just as a bit of balance on both sides because he's got the power fist on that side, so I can't give a cuff on him, but I'd like there to be a little bit of a red spot on both sides. So I decided to do the power cable in that color just to balance the model out more than anything else. On other models, I might do power cable things a different color, but for this one, just to balance the left and right side out a little bit. I'd add a little bit over here. Okay, and as I said, we've now got this kind of red spot here, red spot here, and the sash going up. So I do want to give him, I'm going to do his, whatever those are called, good lots, off lots, something. Tell me what those are called, please, so I can keep making this mistake. I'm going to do those red as well, and then the rim of his hat red. So then we've got a nice kind of triangular peak up here, drawing attention to his head. That's the idea anyway. And then just, I think, I'll get a smaller brush again, and just do this band around his hat. I'm sure there's an official name for it, but I'm just calling it. Okay, so at that point, we've now got a base coat on everything except his head and top of his hat, which I haven't decided I'm going to go back and do that green. Uh, so most of the colors, that's kind of the, the base kind of piece done. I, I mentioned earlier the green and the blue in particular, I find look a little bit better with a second coat. One thing you'll also notice with contrast paints and paints in general, they're liquids, they, as they dry, they contract. So you might notice there's a couple of spots like here on his uh, on his chest piece, um, and I think I saw a piece on his coat, one of the collars as well, where yeah here, where as the paint's dried, it's kind of contracted off there. So there's a couple of little white spots still. So this is why it's another good reason for just go and double check everything at this point, see if there's any gaps. And thankfully, I think most of the areas that do have those kind of spots are on the green and blue bits, which I'm going to give a second coat on anyway. So I'm just going to get that second coat on, look for any of those 
little white spots that might still be hanging out there. And yeah, then we'll move on to the next step. starting to look much better. And now we get the second coat of blue on. It's that little vibe in blue again. <clears throat> and again, looking for a few of these areas where it's yeah, peeled away a little bit. So we can just fill those in while we're at it. There, but tidied up. Oh, and I've missed another spot. These red sashes. I'll get those done quickly too. Said so at this point, if there's anything that's look that's still white or grey, uh, means you probably missed a bit. And I'm throwing my brushes around. So just double check over everything, look for any little gaps you might have missed. I always find there's something I forget to do. So yes, just missed this little section of this sash at the top here. So I'll just fill that in now. better. Okay, so that is all of the contrast kind of areas done now. You still just a little bit left to dry um, on the green, but that's the, the main base of the model done. We've got all the colors in there. We've got a good contrast coat of everything. For a lot of your kind of rank and file troops, that could be enough. You know, that will that will get you a pretty good way. way. That's what's so nice with the slap chop method is you've got those highlights and things built in and the contrast on top looks really good. We're going to go and then pick out one or two more colors just to um, you know, go one little bit extra mile. Uh, so I'm not going to actually highlight everything. I don't feel like for, like I said, like your average trooper, it's probably not necessary. You're going to have like 20, 30, 40 of them out there. But that's what's so nice about this method is you can kind of decide how far you want to go yourself. So for us, kind of the main colors that we care about are that green and the blue. Those are the two kind of signature colors of the army and they're the most dominant colors on the model. So we are gonna spend a little bit more time highlighting each of those. Um, and I'm also gonna spend a little bit of time on the red since that is kind of like one of the, the special thing for this particular sergeant. After that, we're just gonna do a little bit of the metallics and that's gonna be us done. Uh, so it's really you know quite an efficient method. And as I said, like for each individual model or for characters, things like that, you can spend a little bit more time on them. But this, this kind of method gives you a nice quick way of getting the, the core kind of pieces done. So for the first highlight, we're gonna do the green and we're gonna use Strachan green for this. There's a lot of really nice actual greens in this, in the range I find, uh, it's not a Citadel color, uh, but like Nurgling green, um, Lauren forest, there's a lot of those kind of like slightly desaturated um, off, off greens. But for, for this, I think Strachan green works really well. And it's basically gonna be the only highlight we need for, for this particular guy. So I'm gonna go back to slightly smaller brush this time. And we're really just gonna go and pick out the edges um, and the tops of the sleeves, tops of the hat, things like that. Because we've already done all that work with originally to get the, the shadows with the black and the gray from the, the priming, I'm not gonna bother trying to highlight areas which are already dark. It doesn't make sense, they're already shadows. Uh, so we're really just gonna focus on the areas which are already kind of brought out as highlights and just exaggerate those so we get even more kind of contrast there and a slightly different color tone, so that helps as well to make the model a little bit more interesting. 
It's one thing I find in general when you're doing this kind of slap chop contrast paint is um, it, when you choose your highlight color, it's actually quite nice to pick something that's slightly off of what you use as your base color just to get a little bit more range in there. It just tends to make the things look a little bit more interesting rather than just like, oh, it's a slightly brighter, lighter color of what's already on there. So that's why I like Stratton Green. It's a little bit more like the, the Creed Cram, as you can see, has a little bit of a bluish tinge. It's quite dark, um, whereas the Stratton Green is a bit more warm, a bit more of those kind of uh, beigey tones in there as well. So I think it works quite nice as a slightly different color. But yeah, we'll start off. Let's pick out some of these ridges on the coat. You've got this nice ridge along the edge of the coat, so it's really easy to just use the side of your brush and pick those out. Quickly get a lot of these sort of more bold edge highlights done, Be nice and quick. But you can spend as much or as little time kind of on this step as you want. Once you've got those main ridges and details kind of in there, you're most of the way. Next up is the blue. This one gets two highlights, um, just because I think it, with the Levide and blue, it kind of needs it a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is Thunderhawk blue um, to kind of get the general areas. And then we're going to go and do a second highlight of Baroth blue to go really bright in a couple of spots. Um, because it is quite a dark scheme overall. We did want to have one or two things that brightened up a little bit. If you want something to look dark, it's actually useful to have a couple of a couple of key little bright bits just to get that contrast in there. So the blue is where we decided to really get that. So the blue is a little bit more poppy. So we started with a really dark base coat for the blue. We're going to give it a Thunderhawk blue um, sort of chunky highlight and then a much brighter kind of spot just to give a bit of contrast to everything else. So for this, we can just pick out all these little ridges on his armor plates. I'm not really going to do anything too fancy with trying to blend this too much. But what I will do is just sketch in a kind of little brighter spot right on the very top. Here that we'll do again because we're going to have a, a bright spot with that bar of blue later. So we're just going to give ourselves an area to put that. It's sort of generally circular work with the shape of the armor something like that. Rather than trying to blend the whole thing, we'll just put some hot spots on it instead. The other shoulder. And in this shoulder, I'm not even gonna bother with that because we've got this Aquila thing here instead. So that should draw enough attention all by its own. Now, I know this looks like a bit of a blob right now in a shoulder, but don't worry, we're gonna go and take care of that once we got the second highlight on there and then we'll go and blend it back in. But at this point it's easier just to know exactly where you want to, want to stick that so it's kind of a big target for you. Just give it a once over, make sure I haven't missed anything. So yeah, the areas which are going to be really bright like the top of the backpack here, top of the power pack, the shoulder, Maybe just give it a second coat just so they're a little bit more saturated and that'll make the next coat go on a little bit easier. So with the Baroth blue, we're really just going to pick out um, a couple of key places. We want this blue to really pop, um, but that, the best way to do that is actually to be quite minimal with it. Uh, so we're just going to pick a couple of spots we want to be really bright and then those will, will be a bit more eye-catching. Right around here, again just below his head so that will draw attention to the center of the model nicely and just mirror that down here good and for the shoulder pad i'm going to get these these corners just little spots on them really and make them look nice and bright get some of these the knuckles on the fist and stand out a little bit. Let's look for all these little divots in the armor and pick those out. Just 
pick a few more places. So right on the corner here, it's this ridge. Same thing on the other side. Yeah, we really want some of these spots to look quite bright. So what you can do is once you've got those spots in place, you can then just sort of blend in a little streak and that'll make the spot brighter while giving you a sort of natural blend in. So that was kind of what I'm doing here. So we've got this brightest spot here, but as we pull the paint into our, we get a little bit of a blend kind of going into that brightest spot. And just pick a couple of spots to do that. Don't want to overdo it. Otherwise everything just looks, kind of lose the contrast. So last thing here um, is that I mentioned that spot on the shoulder. And there's a couple other little places where I'm just going to tidy up a little bit. So I'm going to take back the little vibe in blue, the contrast paint. You might not need to do this step, um, but it's quite nice at this point. If you have gone a little, if you made a little bit of a mistake or you've got these spots, you can just use the vibe in blue to kind of blend things back in again. So if you've just gone a bit too far, you just go back. So I'm just going to go over this spot on the shoulder pad here and just kind of blend it back in. We're drawing almost another circle on the outer edge of the one we did. And that should give us a nice little blend there. And just have a look around for any other places you want to tidy up, especially around some of those divots. Occasionally you go over the line a little bit. I'm going to make this line here just a little bit thinner. And that is the blue done. So we're getting pretty close now. So we've got one more highlight to do, which is the red, and we're gonna use Evil Sun Scarlet for this. So I'm just gonna give the, the one highlight for this. You could give it another one. Um, I quite actually like mixing Wraithbone in with red as a highlight color sometimes. You can also do like Troll Sailor Orange, things like that, Talite Ochre maybe. Um, but for this, we're just gonna do one, one quick highlight with um, Evil Sun Scarlet. Again, just using the edge of your brush, getting those edges done. And the previous thing we did, Flesh Tears Red, it is quite a nice dark red. So even just picking out Evil Sun Scarlet does give you quite a nice contrast already. Shoulder bits. I'm not even bother trying to name now. Lost my confidence. And this cable at the back. The top area is where the light's going to catch it. And finally, the rim of his hat. The band there. So we are getting very close now. The last thing really is just to do some of the metals. So this is very standard for what I use my default dark gray silver metal is just lead belcher and then we're gonna give it a coat of the silicanum afterwards. That's it. So this will just take, this will be pretty quick. And there's not too many metal bits on this guy on your, your standard marine, or not marine, that's the wrong thing, guardsman. Uh, you'll have your las gun, barrels, things like that. But yeah, just, Picking out a few of these little details. He does have quite a few of these eagly things, I suppose. So we'll just get those in lead belcher over the black we did earlier. And those are these skulls. Quill on his chest here. Even more skulls. Can never have too many skulls. It's 40k after all. And this is also a time, I didn't uh, mention this earlier, but you'll notice I left a bunch of things earlier, like the buttons on his jacket, pieces like that. Now is actually a good time to go and fill those kind of in. I don't think it's worth trying to preserve them earlier on, those little details. Uh, it just slows you down when you're trying to get those contrast coats on. 
but now we can kind of go back and just add them back in. Most of them are so small, I don't think we need to really bother basing them black like we did with everything else. Little bits and pieces like that. You can just add them in now. Little details. All right, now all we're gonna do is get some basilicanum that we used earlier. And we're just gonna go over all the silver metal areas with that. I think it's a really nice um, coating over lead belcher personally that dulls it down a little bit and makes it look a little bit more worn and used. Um, but you can also use like null neural, things like that. Um, but basilicanum is, is definitely my favorite thing to, to put over top of, of lead belcher for just a very standard dark gray metal. Okay, and with that, we are pretty much done. So we've covered all the main pieces. We've had to do the green, the armor, um, all the, the leather, different pieces like that. Um, I didn't cover like how I do faces because honestly, when you're doing Astro Militarum, I kind of like to do a range of things. So there's not really one recipe I go to for that. If you would like to see how we do faces, let me know, I'll, I'll put together a tutorial. Um, obviously I haven't done his base because you're probably gonna wanna do whatever base you, you like, but um, we, we'll get him on some nice Martian dirt soon. And yeah, I'll get him on the battlefield. So I've got a few little touch-ups to do, uh, but mostly that's it. So I hope this has been useful. I hope it's given you some ideas of what uh, you can do with a pretty quick paint scheme uh, to get an army ready fast, um, but hopefully still looks really, really good on the table. So that's it for today. If you have any other questions, anything you think we could do differently, or you just want to see this guy on the table soon with Dean's army, uh, let us know in the comments down below. Otherwise, we'll see you again soon for another episode.